He briefly attended Southwest Texas University, had a sub-1 GPA, and told his dad to stop wasting yeah, his, money. His buddy told him it was a point four. Yeah. And uh, I believed it. <laughs> like, God bless the guy, it's but... School, school is not for him. Studying is not yeah, for see, him. Yeah, see, that's the key, everybody. Listen, I, I, I was only in school for a little while as well. But the thing with school that I've learned is that you have to care. You know what I'm saying? Right. I need to write this down. He did not want to go to school. He wanted to be a wrestler. He was forced to go to school. He didn't want to be there. He didn't give a shit. And so when they said he had a .4 GPA, I was like, well, of course he did. Why would he do any better? He didn't want to be there. Yes. They didn't have wrestling in South Florida, Texas University or whatever he was at. I don't remember what so he meets meets Jose Lothario. Jose is training people, and his dad agrees to stop paying for college and to pay for wrestling school instead at the hefty sum of $3,000 in the early 1980s, which is a lot of money. I think that uh, I really liked his dad. It should have been the mid-80s, by the way. I really liked his dad because his dad basically, his dad did not want him to be a wrestler. But then when Sean got his point four, the story his dad told was, well, I didn't want Sean to come to me when he was 30, 35 years old and say, Dad, I could have been a pro wrestler if it weren't for you. And so he paid the $3,000. That was his dad's story. But when you think about it, he had a .4 in, in college. So it's like, you know, got to find something for this kid to do. Also true. Also true. So they keep going back. As the story is going chronologically, they keep showing clips of 2020, I guess 2020, Sean. And we see Sean in his home doing his morning stretching routine. He wakes up every day, is reminded of what he did for a living for decades. He's stretching out his back. He's got a heat pad. He wants to get new knees. But through all of this, he says he knew what he was getting into. He knew he was not going to be a famous, successful wrestler and healthy. And he said you're all, not going to be independent, independently wealthy and independently healthy. Yes. And I thought, I hope you're only talking about wrestling. There's a lot of independently wealthy people that are actually healthy. That's true. That's true. I did laugh. He's got the letters WWE on the wall. <laughs> Just huge letters. So he makes his debut. He's training with, with, training with Lothario in Texas. Debuts in Louisiana for Bill Watts in 1984. You never guess. He impressed everyone. He's Sean. Uh, he's, but he also at the time was very respectful and carried himself where, well and was... Mouth shut, ears open all the time. And he moved from there to Kansas City. They put him with Marty Jannetty. And they found Marty Jannetty for the show. Did they ever? <laughs> Dude, it's amazing watching Marty Jannetty because, like, there's so much to say about this documentary. But Sean was a straight-laced, friendly, nice, pleasant young man. And then he met Marty. That's how it went, yes. This leads to a decade of serious alcoholism and drug abuse, which they do not skimp on. Nearly kills the guy. A lot more than that, actually. Like, yes. they, they have a... Uh, Triple H says the dumbest thing that Shawn Michaels ever said was one day he told me, I should have taken so many pills that I would have died right after WrestleMania 10. I would have been an all-time legend. That's, that's, that's where he was at WrestleMania 10, by the way. Which was what? 94? 93? 94? 94, I think. Whatever it was. But anyway, I guess it would have been later, but... 95. But the point is, uh, 94. Anyway, point is, Marty led him to almost die. Mm -hmm. But then, like at the end of the story, Sean basically says, I wouldn't have done everything that I did. I would not have been as great as I was if I hadn't lived through all of that. Mm -hmm. So it is a very weird, I don't know, it's just... Marty's just g gleefully talking about how he corrupted Shawn Michaels and yep. all the crazy shit that they did. He's still laughing about it. Yep. Hey. Shawn could not get into bars, so he'd wait in the parking lot, and Ma Marty would bring him beer and women. And together, they go to the AWA in 86 in Las Vegas doing the TV tapings out there. Shawn, first time he's ever been in a casino, drops a coin in a slot machine, pulls it, gets triple sevens, wins $750. And immediately spends it all on cocaine. Mm. And we get a segment on the, I'm not making this up, the joy of cocaine. Mm -hmm. How happy it made Sean, how much he liked doing cocaine. Don't and watch this with your son, Craig. Too late. Oh. 
So they show the famous match with uh, uh, Sean and Marty and uh, Buddy Rose and uh, Doug Summers. Doug, Doug Summers. Summers. Yeah. They just call it the blood match. Yes. And so I don't know if Buddy Rose was the one that actually told me this story. It might have been somebody else. But the story that I heard was that Sean went to cut himself and then he put the blade in his trunks. Yes. And then it cut his fucking legs, and so his legs are now bleeding everywhere. I didn't know that. Okay? That's the story that I was told. I think it was from Buddy Rose, so it may be true. But all I know is when they when they showed where he got busted open, Buddy is throwing him right into the turnbuckle, and they do like an extreme close-up, and it fucking looks like Sean went headfirst hard into this metal buckle. So I'm presuming that it's a blade job because of the story that I heard. But, I mean, it may have been a hard way, or maybe it was a little both. Or maybe he didn't go all the way, and Buddy said, well, let's open him up. Well, whatever happened, I mean, it was a blood bath. There was blood and, he, and you knew that. You, well, the thing was, you knew there was going to be blood because he was wearing all white. Yes. Also true. Yes. Also true. So, the, the I, this is one of those things where, when I say it, it sounds like impossible, but it actually happened. Vader... Was in the AWA in 1986 with the Midnight Rockers. He was, I believe, the baby bull Leon White. I think that's what they called him. But he had heard their reputation for partying. And when he met them, was very disappointed. That they weren't doing that much. And Kurt Hennig is the one who explained, well, they don't start till after midnight. And then the Judas Priest plays. Midnight Rockers was a, such a better name than just The Rockers. They're, anyway. So... You can tell they were doing tons and tons of drugs because Sean's wearing baggy acid washed jeans with suspenders. Well, I think, Vinny, that it might have partially been that they were supposed to be straight-laced, handsome, pretty boy baby faces. Maybe. And so you didn't want the, the, uh, the idea that they only were partying at midnight. These were nice young men, Vinny. They were just rockers. I see. Yes. So they claim to have gotten the entire American Wrestling Association kicked out of the showboat hotel for wrecking too many hotel rooms. It is 1987. They get a tryout with the World Wrestling Federation in Buffalo. They are on pins and needles, trying to be in the best behavior, trying to fit in with the locker room. They're at the bar, and Jimmy Jack Funk, they claim, began to eat his glass. And so Sean joined in and started breaking glass everywhere. And this this is the clip, I think, where... uh, It was. They did the commercial where Sean is saying, that absolutely did not happen. He's, He's adamant. And I remember for a week I was thinking... What could this guy be talking about? Like, what story from Shawn Michaels' life is just total bullshit? I, this I got to hear. And it was this story, because the story of what happened to lead to them getting fired, Shawn says, dude, all I did was I broke a wine glass on my head, and it got blown totally out of proportion, and we ended up getting fired. I believe him 100%. Because if you watch this documentary, this bro is open about everything. Yep. Yes. So, like, there's no reason, uh, to 30 years later, for him to tell some lie about why they got fired from, from W. There's no reason whatsoever. So I totally believe that that is exactly what happened, and it was blown out of proportion. It's party time on the program today. I got our main man, Filthy Tom Lawler, here. We're going to have a celebration for you for your, for your epic victory here. Please sit down, Tom. What's going on? You are talking to the champ, baby. Yeah. The new Japan strongest. I got balloons for oh, you. Oh, yeah. Yes. There were no balloons. It said, congratulations, new new Japan strong open weight champion. So instead I got thinking of you and a cat. We're not going to be drinking here on Twitch. We're only going to have a shot. That doesn't count as drinking. The finest. The finest absinthe. A Brian size Diet Coke. Look at this thing. Yeah, this is this is a big one. Probably a little bit too big, but you know what? Let's do this. One, two, three. Ooh, man. Oh. The greatest mixed martial artist slash wrestler in figure four history. Thomas. Lawler, the greatest Taurus that has ever been a champion professional wrestler. The greatest Taurus? You know what I always do when we're done with calls? I hit this button. You know what it says? It says this. We are sorry, but the show has ended. Goodbye. This right here, my friend, this is Mini Zazu. He is the new show mascot. He's going to be sitting here. He's so proud of you for what you did over that weekend, Tom. Congratulations, Tom. 
Thanks, man. That's right. No tears on this show, Tom. Come on, buddy. There, Hold there it together. Joy. You did a there great job. Joy. We're all proud of you here. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.